And living in that sorrow, I, I didn't want to continue. And for whatever reason, on that evening, I believe it was around 6 o'clock in the evening, and I closed my eyes, but I was wide awake, and I got contemplating death. I thought, then I thought about a world that would never have me in it, that I would not be in it. I, I, I remembered my friends who were at the funeral. I remember the casket. I remember seeing myself there. I, I was dead. There was no Ed. There was no tomorrow. There was nothing. And then there was a cloud of darkness that surrounded me that engulfed me, that, that hung like blankets upon blankets, that was impenetrable, that was a mountain of darkness, nothing but darkness. I was nothing. I was a nothing. And the only thing I had was my awareness of being this nothing. And the fear, I, I, I guess that was the true meaning of fear for me, because I was terrified. And then in the, in the field of that darkness, of those clouds, of that deep, black, dark, there was a beam of light. And that beam was so small. It was like a hole in a tent, I remember as a kid. You'd sleep in a pup tent, and it might have a little hole, and it'd be a big, maybe a beam of light would come through at night. And that's what it was, like a, just a tiny light coming through a tent hole. And I swam, I know. I thought, if I could just get to the light. And I was swimming like a, like a tadpole or amoeba, something right at the very basis of life. But it's just this tiny thing in this pitch dark, swimming towards this dark, this sea of darkness. And I swam for it. I, I remember wiggling through that hole of light. And all of a sudden, I was in a room of light. The room was, was a, a most beautiful, softest, most warming, most uh, loving light you could imagine. It was all around me. And it was a great presence of peace. A great presence of peace. And inside this room it shone and I was warm with it. And I was so thankful. I said, at least I'll have the light. I'll never have darkness again. I said, oh, what would I have if I lost the light? And I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll put the light inside me. And then I could never lose it. And when I put that light in me, it became, it became the universe. It became the universe. It became the whole everything. I exploded into oneness with everything because it was the living light and that light lives in me and it lives in you and it lives in every human being on the planet. But we must reach it and we must, you must die. You must totally die to the other. You must totally die to the, to, to the past everything and be open and live in the moment you're in with all the with all the beauty and the strength and the vitality that you can possibly realize because it's always there it's always in the moment it's always in the now it is where the light is at is where our Creator's at. He has to be here, here in the now, in us, us in Him. He in us, us in Him, just the way Jesus taught us, just exactly the same way. What we are doing today is of such vital importance. I don't want to miss an opportunity to do the job that I was sent to do. And it was the job that it was sent to do in my feelings, in my depth of my, of my heart, is that the human being has got to come to a change. And we can't do it in the, with, with the vehicles that we're using today, we'll never get there. There's no politician going to give it to you. There's no party going to give it to you. There's no religion that's going to give it to you. It has never done it before. And it's not going to do it now. And the chaos that's out there with the wars and the starvation and all the, all the other violence that is going on, is, it's all directly to the, to the violence that's living in each one of us. You know, we've locked ourselves into our own angers and our own jealousies and our own fears and our own doubts. 
And I see that. I see that now as, as my time on this planet grows short. What I have left here to do is try to see, try to point out to you, just with logical steps, how we can see that we do live in the now, in this moment, in the only moment that is real. It's not about Ed Thompson. I'm, Mr. Christian Murdy had uh, related to himself as a telephone. I don't know, I'm not comparing myself with Mr. Christian Murdy, but that is definitely what I feel like as a messenger um, that, you know, get the message right. Please, please, please. The message that, that, that is eternal is that we are all one. We are not these separate little entities that have caused conflict and hatred and war all over the world. We are one. And if we can come to that oneness, you know, we do have a chance to make this planet work with human beings, otherwise we can't. We went down to see if we could have the Whipple surgery. We had high hopes for that, but that was out of the question. It had already advanced into my bloodstream and it got on these other organs. So it was just, they could not operate. And they couldn't give me radiation because radiation works one spot, or one small area. And the mine was all over. So it was bad news. Um, fortunately, they put me on a brand new chemo that was just new in this country in um, October of last year called Fafirinol. And it, um, myself and two other ladies were put on it. The other ladies didn't do well with it. And, uh, but I somehow, I, I, it almost killed me at first, but I came out and that was six months, well, that was eight months ago. And eight months ago, they gave me six months to live. So I am very blessed to be at this point in my life. And that's why I want so, it is so important for you to realize that this isn't about, because there's nothing left for me. You know, what I, the little time I have left, I want to be, to know that I at least pointed out to the best of uh, where I'm from. That you can live free of conflict. You can be, you can, you can, you know, we've been taught wrong from the beginning, and it's time to wake up and say, you know, I, I choose to be free. I'm not going to live by a, another man's authority. No other man knows any better than I do. I will, few, I will do good. I will live by good. But I'm not doing it by, a, you know, and then we can be, start to be in free. Start living in the now, the moment you're in, with all your energy, and you'll, be, you'll know what true happiness is. To know your spirit was the most incredible experience that I have ever had in my life, and it never, ever ends me as just exuberating and as much today as it was then. It's a living thing. But after that experience, I didn't know where to go. I went to the Catholic Church every day. I loved, I, I loved the Catholic Church. It was a beautiful place, and I prayed there. And but I, I there was I was seeking something more, something to get in touch with this light that I knew that lived in me and lives in everybody. I was in a bookshop in a, in Janesville, and I seen the book The Course of Miracles, and I looked at it, and it was a <laughs> I liked some of the quotations. I never heard anything about it. And so I purchased it, and it was, uh, and I purchased another tape that day, a tape that day by a man named Tara Singh. And Tara Singh was a student of Mr. J. Krishnamurti.